Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Honey Apple Farm. This is absolutely crazy. It is the middle of January. It is actually probably too warm to be wearing jeans. We've had a day, a stretch of days, that have been almost 70 degrees and things are happening in the garden, which I did not expect to be happening this time of year. So hooray, unseasonably warm weather. So today's project I'll give you guys a close up here in a minute. Today's project, the garlic that we planted, and for those of you who are along for the November challenge, you saw me plant this garlic. The garlic is coming up and coming up profusely. The problem is that something is eating the tops. And so the plan for today is to put some chicken wire over these two beds, the low beds, to stop whatever it is that's been eating them. So let me uh, give you a close up so you can see what we're looking at. You can see here, this has been eaten off. This has been eaten off. See if we can do that. This has been eaten off. So whatever it is, seems uninterested in getting up into the high bed or unable. We're thinking it might be rabbits and maybe that's just a little too high for them. But this is certainly within their realm and I can't blame them. I don't think rabbits generally go after garlic, but as you can see, everything else is dead. So yeah, you know, in the middle of winter, why not go after something that's green and tasty looking? The plan is to reuse these chicken wire things, which were on these beds originally. The first year we had them, they were up on legs and we put chicken wire protectors over all four beds because something was eating the plants. And so we've kept them in storage. I used a couple of these to wrap one of the tomato plants this year, but they've just been in storage and they're about the right size, although this bed did not have these wooden posts in it, so we'll have to adjust for that. So my intention is to just nail these around the edge of the beds and nail it down so that the bunnies or whatever can't get in there. And because none of these were capped off on both ends, I'm gonna to have to overlap the two pieces per bed. So that's the plan for today. I can't get over how gloriously warm it is out here, you guys. I mean, it's seriously, I haven't even started working yet and already I'm feeling sweaty in my jeans. It feels like the most beautiful early summer, 70 degree, you know, barely any wind day. Gosh, it's gorgeous. All right, let's get to work. Unfortunately, the way that they're bent is not really going to work. So I'm going to put some nails in and I'm going to grab some zip ties, basically zip tie the wire mesh to the nails. few hours as you can see the sun has hidden behind the clouds but we're almost done with bed number one and while I was looking out at the beds from the kitchen window eating my fresh baked bread I had a thought and the thought was instead of nailing them in and trying to tie them down I'm wondering if I have enough stakes to basically just kind of stake them into the ground so that is what I'm going to go look for now. So while this was a genius idea, and I did have enough stakes to stake out one of the beds, unfortunately it didn't actually hold the chicken wire close enough to the base of the bed to keep a bunny or a squirrel from climbing up inside of it. So after I gave it a try, I just decided to go back to doing what had already worked, which was nailing it and zip tying it. So, you know, you learn stuff new every day. Here is the final project. It is by no means professionally done. I have no idea if putting the nails in and wrapping the zip ties around them will work to stop things from burrowing up inside, but let us hope so. So I had to use two pieces. As you can see, they're joined here for bed. And I have to say, these cinder blocks came from my neighbor there were 12 of them. 10 of them are marking out the edges of the wildflower bed. And these other two usually live up on the patio, but they certainly are handy for tamping down the entire side 
of the bed. So that's that one. This one got a little more slopey and the wire comes out a little bit further. But we'll see. It's definitely a DIY job. It's definitely a let's see if this works job. But uh, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. If you don't try it, you don't know. Okay, so that's it for today. Fingers crossed that that was successful. Thank you so much for following along on today's journey. I hope this was interesting or educational or at least, oh God, what is she doing? Please don't do that. Please like and subscribe if you are so inclined. Drop a comment below if you have some input on this project and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye for now from a very tropical January day in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, and also, just as a side note on the garden, look, I have green things. Those of you who saw the mint harvesting video will notice that's catnip, that's a catnip, that's a catnip. There's some little bit of catnip down here. The catnip has been outside in all weathers ever since I did the harvesting in mid-December and it's doing fine. This is the lemon balm, also doing fine. This is the regular mint looking okay. The peppermint is not looking great at all, but I assume that'll come back. And in contrast, this is what the actual herb bed looks like. So I'm pretty excited. We have green growing things. We have garlic and we have catnip and we have some mint things. So neat.